and I, Jack, the Pumpkin King. Hello everyone and welcome to Work Entitled, the show where we talk about books, movies, and everything in between. You have no idea how long I've been waiting to use that clip. So, in case you couldn't guess, we are talking about Nightmare Before Christmas. Why? I needed a Christmas movie to talk about, and this is really the only one that I get active joy out of watching. So let's talk about it. Nightmare Before Christmas is a 1993 stop-motion film written by Tim Burton and Michael McDowell and directed by Henry Selick, which I went through life thinking that Tim Burton directed this movie and I feel oddly betrayed. Now, let's get into the plot. If you somehow haven't seen this movie, leave and go watch it. This is pre-recorded. I can wait. But essentially, the plot of the the plot is the king of Halloween Town, Jack Skeleton, voiced by Chris Sarandon with his singing voice belonging to Danny Elfman, coming across Christmas Town and getting the not at all terrible idea to take over Christmas. However, trouble arises when, while delivering presents, the government tries to take him down. Oh, and also the boogeyman, voiced by Ken Page, wants to eat Santa. At least I think that's what he wants to do. It sure as hell seems that way. But it's fine because Jack comes to save Santa and the movie is er, <laughs> comes to save Santa and Sally, and everyone gets a happy ending. Well, not Oogie Boogie. He gets torn apart and burned alive. Holy shit, this movie is kind of dark now that I'm describing the plot. I mean, this is Tim Burton we're talking about, who I've always known as making family-friendly horror movies. Anyone remember Corpse Bride? If you were not aware, Nightmare Before Christmas, the movie, was actually adapted from a three-page poem written by Tim Burton while he was working at the Walt Disney Animation Studio. Originally, Tim, Bur Tim wanted to adapt the a poem into a TV special with the voice of the narrator being provided by Vincent Price, who, on top of being Burton's favorite actor, was also primarily known for his roles in horror films. He sadly died shortly after the film was released at the age of 82. After showing character models created by Rick Nick Heinrichs to Henry Selick, Hank Disney took up the project originally as a short film. However, the tone of the movie was deemed too weird for Disney and development was stalled. Burton ended up being fired from the studio in 1984. I'm not trying to say that this was due to the movie, however, it was worth mentioning. In 1990, Tim Burton found out that Walt Disney Company still owned the film rights to Nightmare Before Christmas, and the idea piqued the interest of chairman at the time, co-founder of DreamWorks, Jeffrey Katzenberg. So production was started up again, with Burton hiring Michael McDowell to write the adaptation and Henry Selleck directing. Reportedly, Tim Burton didn't want to direct because, one, he was already directing Batman Returns, and two, the funnier reason in my opinion, he didn't want to be involved in the, his words, painstakingly long process of stop motion. There were some creative differences between Burton and McDowell, which led to the movie becoming a musical, with songs composed by hey, Danny Elfman. Who doesn't like musicals? Tim Burton apparently doesn't, which is ironic as, as seeing as how he directed Sweeney Todd, The Demon Barber of Fleet Street, and that movie is considered one of the best adaptations of a Broadway musical ever. I probably should have mentioned this during the production segment, but I'm going to mention it here. Nightmare Before Christmas had a budget of $24 million, which, putting it through an inflation calculator, equals exactly $48,738,148. And 78 cents. Because remember, this was the early 90s. Yeah, you, you get the point. It also earned $50 million during its initial run, which, once again, putting it through an inflation calculator, equals $95,705,536.33. So I would say it did tremendously well. Roger Ebert, this is the second time he's been mentioned on this show gave a glowing review going as far as saying that the visual effects were as revolutionary as Star Wars. Other reviews followed suit, and the film currently sits on Rotten Tomatoes at a 95% critic score and a 91% audience score. Needless to say, a lot of people like this movie. So, that is Nightmare Before Christmas. I couldn't think of anywhere else to put this, but there is going to be a sort of sequel novel coming out next summer titled Long Live the Pumpkin Queen. It's based around Sally, and Lord knows I'm going to try and get my hands on that book when it comes out. So I hope you enjoyed. Until next time, peace out. Also, I, I have to like start writing this into my scripts.
if you want to suggest episodes, get updates on episodes, or just talk to me, I'm on Reddit at Ashley Marie WT. So, yeah. Until next time, peace out. On to the next one, bitches!